Uh, morning guys, uh, we're back out here. Well, I am by myself. No one in the boat with me fishing today. Today, I'm asking you, don't fast forward. Watch this whole video because you could be in for a treat. Now, recently I had the pleasure of going out with probably, I'm saying one of the best snapper fishermen in Australia and definitely the best snapper fisherman in Southeast Queensland. Now, his name's Dean, I went out with him. He was nice enough to show me a couple of uh, uh, tricks and tips to make my catch of snapper more frequent and um, easier. You know, down here, Southeast Queensland, sometimes we've got to fight tooth and nail to catch a good feed of fish, especially inside Moreton Bay. I'm, I'm outside of Stratty here, and. We're not as lucky as the boys up north where you can just go bang trout and nannies and reds and stuff like that. You know, it's it can be very, very difficult fishing out here. And um, sometimes you just can't catch a break. Anyway, I'm not saying I'm totally useless. I can, I can find a snapper. I actually find it, you know, I'm actually not too bad at catching a big snapper in the shallows and stuff like that. But when it comes to sitting out here in 60, 70, 80 metres, drifting and fishing like that and trying to get bag limits of, of good quality snapper, it can be very difficult. So uh, I've been in touch. I've known Dino for a long time, known his dad for a long time. And my old man used to fish with his pop years and years and years ago, who was a very well-known fisherman uh, throughout Australia. And it's in their blood. And these fellas, they'll go out by themselves or with one person and they'll line catch up to 220 kilos worth of snapper in a day, which is just out of control. So what surprised me most was just going back to basics with Dean and um, just showing and him showing me how they fish. Now, I'm gonna, won't go through it all right now. I'll explain it all throughout the day. Hopefully I can use his skills because he fishes down south from here but i'll use his skills up here where i fish and see how we go and guys if you guys have a little bit of a struggle sometimes getting your bag limits or or, or bag limits of quality fish um i'm talking like three four kilo fish then you know maybe stick around watch this vid and see how we do i'm learning this new way and um i'm not saying i'm going to just slay the fish today i'm putting it out there and I'm taking you guys along for the ride, so hopefully you don't make a fool out of myself. But the first thing is no run, no fun, and that is 100% true, and I'll tell you why shortly. Lucky today I've pulled up, and we've got a nice little north to south drift, which is absolutely perfect. We've got no wind. It's going to be a glamour day. I'm a little bit late, but anyway, let's see how we go. Anyway, I'm going to um, bait up. I'm going to find some fish along this edge, and you see how we go. Let's do it. One thing I always do is when I'm standing around, I'm looking for like big shows of fish, like, you know, big shows of fish near the bottom and a little bit off the bottom. And don't get me wrong, I know snapper hold up high, but I'm looking for big, big shows of fish. One thing uh, Dean did when we were out there is he wasn't fishing massive shows of fish. He was fishing almost like this sort of stuff, which isn't fish, that's clutter, but you know, maybe three or four like little, bits up high off the bottom like one two three this is a thermocline so ignore that that's just a, a temperature change in the water but we're going to look through here and we're just going to find try and find shows of fish that aren't so big and baity looking you know they're they're more individual fish and they're the ones that we're going to target and drift along also knowing the way that the reef runs in your area so here we've got a north to south running reef so a north to south drift makes it a lot easier on us to cover a lot more ground along that, that north south ledge. So if you've got no current, it doesn't exactly mean they're not biting, it means it's not pushing you along to find where the schools of fish are holding and you need to work a lot harder to find them. So here for instance, it's on the Furuno, coming along and unfortunately I I auto shifted down. See, but we got here, and this this looks more baity than fish. Usually, I would fish that and drift it, but I'm not going to. And I'm not saying there's not going to be fish in that, but they're not feeding. They're not up high. They're close to the bottom. There, you know, they're not up and around and erratic looking for food. And they're the ones you want to find, not this sort of stuff. So first of all, we're going to keep having a look along this edge, see if we can find some fish that look like they're feeding, and I'll show you that. Alright, so literally something like this, 
a lone snapper there. With Dean the other day, we would have just went back up, pulled up, drifted back over, you know, near where we seen that fish and continued to drift and we were picking them up, bang, bang. Like we'd see two fish on the sounder, we'd drift over them, boom, boom, both like both hook up. So literally that's how it was. I'll do a little bit more scanning. You can see here I'm working in and out, just checking along that reef line. And then I'm just going in and out, in and out, following that, that drop off south, seeing where the fish are holding. Here we go. There's a couple more snapper just holding off the bottom. So you can see it's not that big baity ball, it's more individual fish. Not a heap of them, but you'll keep drifting over that on a north-south drift because you're drifting along the edge. And I tell you what, snapper are hunters. They don't, you don't need to put the bait right in front of their mouth. If you drift somewhere near them, they're gonna hit it. The fish down here. And as you can see, I'm just working this whole line here. All right, we're starting to come over a couple more fish here. They're not up high, but they're definitely fish and I'd say they're definitely snapper and they could be good snapper. So I might go back off this ledge once more and I might actually start drifting north to south along this ledge. See how we go. Next minute, full donut for the whole day. <laughs> so what I'm now going to do is I'm gonna pull up about here and I'm gonna drift to the south all the way through all this where I've just gone. See a couple of fish through here. She doesn't miss much, the old pruner, that's for sure. There's two individual snapper there, maybe three. All right, when it comes to rigs, there really is nothing special about what they do. You think being a professional fisherman, you don't want to be, you know, spending a shitload on rigs and stuff all the time, all right? So they keep it simple. Literally, two gangs with a swivel on top, bit of Lumo tube and a ball sinker down to your hooks. And that's it guys. And as for bait, we got the dirty old pilchard. Usually half pilchard. What you want to do is straight through your pilly like that. And there's your rig for snapper. <laughs> How's that for cheap and simple? All right, let's do this. Check my drag. Now, the next part of the uh, snapper fishing puzzle. And maybe the most difficult part is mono. All right, so as a kid, I fished with mono my whole life and I'm 41 now and I reckon it's been like 25 years since I've fished with mono again. It's always been braid. Once braid come out, braid just took over. But all the fishermen that I know that catch a lot of big snapper and a lot of the pros that catch a lot of uh, big numbers of snapper, they fish mono. And that's gonna be your hardest part. You wanna get yourself a nice overhead reel. I just bought myself a Penn Senator, which is an old reel, but it's a good reel. And what, that, what it's awesome for is the line literally just comes off it so easily. Unlike a bait runner or stuff like that, where, you know, there's a bit of resistance, the mono, and this overhead, it just comes off it so nicely. So the bait just comes down really well. The next thing is with your mono, the fish, I don't know what it is, but the fish just react a lot better to it. So with the, the other day I was diving. Um, and, whoop. Here we go. Whoa. Oh, okay. <laughs> Surely not. fish. Whoa. Oh. 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 What the hell? Well, there you go. I just got smoked on something in my pilly. 
All right, I'm gonna do up another drift. Another good thing about mono is re-rigging. Power goods not having to do a braid to mono knot. Um, anyway, so what I was saying about braid is when I was diving the other day, I dove under the water, this fella was using braid on the rock wall. I, I could see it that well, I actually pulled on his line and he ran over to it, it was pretty funny. But anyway, I could see his line so easily. If I can see it, fish can see it, you know? And, and, and mono, you can't see that. I wouldn't have, if I was diving and I swam past mono, I'd swim straight past it so the fish can't see it. Also, they can't feel it. Uh, an old fisherman, Mark Alderson, he actually built the rod that I was using. He's one of the best rod builders in the world, I reckon, like unbelievable rods. He said to me, if you can feel it on your braid, the fish can feel it. So mono, it's a lot harder to feel what's happening down there. Um, and it's probably a lot harder for the fish to feel, so they're more inclined to pick it up and take it because the big snapper are smart. So th these are all little things why, you know, the fish, I think, react a lot better to mono than braid. So let's just see how today pans out. Um, I'll remember stuff that I learnt and I'll let you guys know through the day too, but that's a good start. One drop, one fish, like, we'll see how we go. You can see there just how easy this little sinker peels the line off this reel. There's no resistance and the bait looks very natural when it's going down, so that's a good thing. Another thing is throwing your line up current and drifting back. And what Dino was saying is when you get too much line angle out the back, like when it's past 45, pull it up because the fish don't touch it. Doesn't know why, but years and years of experience and <laughs> I believe whatever he says. So if if your line is way out the back before you're even near where the fish are in the strike zone, your, your uh, sinker is too small and you need to move up to a bigger sinker. Just past this angle here when it just gets out the back, that's usually your hookup angle. And after catching 60 snapper with him the other day, mate, he was right. If you get past the 45 out the back, pull your line in, bang, do it again. If you hit the bottom, you need to learn where the bottom is. Pull your line up 10 meters, float it back out again. Hit the bottom, wind it up, float it back out again until it gets past that angle. Then pull it in, toss it up, and do it again. And basically, that's how he fishes and absolutely slays the snapper. So I'm on the bottom there, all right? I'm going to wind that up 10 metres. I'm going to leave it there for a sec. And then I'm going to float it back down again until it hits the bottom. Oh. Right, I've hooked a good fish here. He's not that big. He's all right. Let's tell you what, you can't feel nowhere near as much on mono way. <laughs> but if this is a snapper, mate, the other one before was a horse. Oh. Yep. And there you go. <laughs> <laughs> this right here guys that right there two hookups in two drops and the other one was way bigger than this thing that right there is why i'll never fish for snapper with braid again in my life look at that that wasn't even off a good school of fish so that's why exactly that i've just i've showed you if you do exactly that you know this is the sort of fish you can expect to catch in numbers. Anyway, let's have another drop. See if we can't show that wasn't a fluke. Oh, how good was that? Seriously, it shows you how big that first fish was. That was, <laughs> that was a big fish. That might've been maybe, you know, 85, 90 centimeter snapper, that first one, he pulled drag. And that thing didn't even pull bugger all drag at all then. So 
just goes to show could add two two good snapper in first two drifts a dead set i'm very grateful for dino to teach me this he's pretty good with the recce fisherman like he doesn't mind we can only keep four per person so he he i openly asked him i said do you mind if i teach people a couple of things that you taught me and he said no nah, go for it so it's all good it's pretty nice of him i guarantee you this is going to help your fishing as well there we go look at those fish up high there that's what we're looking for line angles perfect hopefully we can get down near them and they're hungry all right on the bottom there wind up 10 meters drop him back down yep good fish good fish holy Really nice light tip rod you want. Nothing stiff. It's a really nice light tip. Oh, we got another nice snapper here. Oh wow, look at that. Oh, oh mate. <laughs> <laughs> wow, unreal. Look at this. Absolute quality, quality fish. And I mean, I'm not fishing big shows on the sounder. I'm fishing quite small shows, actually. All right, number two. Look at that, could have easily been number three. Absolute quality. My problem is I can only keep one over 70. So I have to measure these fellas. <laughs> Tell me you're not converted yet. I'll call you a liar. <laughs> Here we go again. You've got to remember to throw it up current because by the time you drift over it, you don't want it too far out the back. And like I said before, the line just runs beautifully off these old overheads. It really does make a difference. We're drifting at about one point two average with no wind so we got a really nice current there one to two knots of current's good once you get up to three knots it just starts getting unfishable making it really difficult so no run no fun you got to work hard imagine trying to cover this ground not moving it's just you'd almost want to put your min coder on and do a fake current <laughs> one, one of the hardest parts is definitely judging with this mono when you hit the bottom i could probably step it up a sinker size now but to be honest i don't have bigger sinkers <laughs> the most unorganized fisherman you've ever met so this line angle is getting a little bit too far out the back now but i'm going to persist with it a little bit more because there was a show of fish that just went past the sounder before damn it just got belted didn't hook up oh. Here we go. Yep. Might have got me bait, the little rat bag. See, just when your line's just, just down past the boat, that's when you hook up. Never when it's out the back. <laughs> that was a good hit. Sure did. Got me. All right. The good thing about this north-south drift is, yeah, just keep drifting. Because I'm going along the ledge, I can drift for a long time. A fair bit on the screen now. That's generally what I'll fish. Dean likes to target more individual shows, but he said you will obviously still get fish out of them, but your better fish come out of those little marks that I was showing you before. We'll get to the bottom pretty quick here. I'm on the bottom there now. So I'll wind up. Oh. Jeez, I think I got hit already. I'm dropping back down. Might have got me bait. All right, that line angle's too far. See that? I don't know if you can see it, but it's out past the 45 there. Can't help myself. I'll just drop it down a little bit more.
All right, I've made a couple of adjustments here because the current's actually hooking now. Parachute's usually used for wind, but can slow you down slightly in current, so I've chucked that out. And I've also chucked a, a little piece sinker on that um, size six that I'm using as well. So hopefully that can allow me to get to the bottom and just spend a little bit more time down there while I'm cruising over these shows of fish because at the moment my line angle is too far too quickly. And I wind it up once and drop back down and it's out past that 45. So I've got to come straight back up and you're missing too many fish. So I've done that, done this, see if I can slow the boat down just a little bit. All right, there's a show of a couple of fish up high, those little spots sitting in about 50 metres. That's what you want. This is a good fish. Ooh. Oh, I'm getting nothing on him. Ooh. Where are we? Oh. This is a good fish. Come on. No. Picked him up, right up in the water column. Oh yeah, this is a good, this is the biggest fish. Come on, baby. Oh, this is a big fish. Oh, I'm nervous now. That line angle was just beautifully just out the back of the boat. Almost just past straight up and down. I'd cast my line out and it had just gone over it. What have we got? Oh, it's a nice knobby. Nice and nice knobby. Oh, wow. Here we go. He's not hooked very well. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> Have a look at this thing! Oh my god! Wow! Holy crap! Wow! 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 Have a go at this. 82 centimetres. I've got one at 67, one at 69, and one at 82. Look at this. Ew! Mate, that was just the most perfect take. Mid water, co water column sitting about 15 metres off. I've just wound it up about 10 metres, started dropping it back down, boom. He just took off, mate. Have a look at that. That right there is quality North Stradbroke Island snapper. And, oh, mate, yeah, look at this. <laughs> Told you the Furuno doesn't miss much. Cruising along like this can pick up a single fish mid water column like that. Pretty good. And then we do it again. Oh, my God. I didn't even hit the bottom. Oh. Oh, <laughs> I didn't even get near the bottom and it just went peeled out of my hands. <laughs> wow, this is unreal. Unreal. Oh, look at that. Oh, here he comes. Perfect, perfect, perfect. How good. He's only just lit. Oh, how good is that? And that's a bag out on quality snapper in an hour. Guys, seriously. This is just ridiculous. I could keep pumping them. That is why you use mono with overheads. I will never go back to fishing for braid for snapper. That is 100% sure.
That is unbelievable. Another one, 65 centimeters, this fella. Just a quality, quality snapper. That right there, <laughs> you know, eating wise, I like the 45s to 50s, but these are just beautiful fish. That is it, I've got my bag limit. That is unbelievable. Dino, mate, you are an absolute weapon fisherman. Thanks so much for teaching me what you taught me. Just those couple of tips. And I applied it with what I already knew, and look at that, unreal. If you've watched our channel for a while, you'd know that I always bang on about the moon tipping the fish out. Well, today, it was. I also did a couple more drifts after I'd bagged out on some bigger schools like this one here and this one here, resulting in much smaller fish, still good fish, but much smaller fish than I was catching when I was targeting the more singular shows of fish like these two up high here. Those singular shows of fish resulting in much larger fish to the boat. Rightio, we're out at Jiggy Town. Good to see you. my spot still has a bit of life on it. Check this out. <laughs> so I'll, pull, I'll pull up and see which way we're drifting. I'm going to put a jig down through that. Hold on to your hats, hopefully. All right. This is a wicked little jigging combo. This is Daiwa Alexa 300. And I've got the Nomad jigging rod. And just got the, I don't even know what the jigs are. It's a 100 gram one. Got all this from Hot Tackle. Those boys have ridiculously cheap prices. They're awesome to deal with. If you haven't shot with them, try it. I guarantee you'll shop nowhere else. But anyway, let's, hopefully this hits the bottom without too much current. Let's see how we go. All right, I've swapped to more of a knife jig now instead of like that fluttering one. See if that makes a difference. hook something on the jig but it's not big. Uh, I think it's a tuna of some sort. Almost guarantee it. <laughs> Whoop. I think he's coming up now. Oh, look at this. Sashimi, it's a bonito. Rightio, this fella here, he would usually go straight in for a bait or he'd be a live bait for a uh, Spanish mackerel. But recently, my good mate Pete that I dive with said to me, you need to try these, damn it, with sashimi. And I tried it with the little one I got a couple of days ago and it is beautiful. I'm actually not joking, it was nicer than the yellowfin tuna that we got. So if you ever get the chance with a little bonito like this, bleed him straight on ice and try him for sashimi and you'll say, thanks Adam and thanks Pete. Uh, hooked up on the jig again here. Just come over and... Nice little school, keep drifting over fish here. Stay tuned, I'll have it up in a jiffy. Look. Here it comes. What do we got? Whoa, whoa hey, Kingy. <laughs> He's just woke up. Woohoo! Why'd he wake up now? Uh, that's what I wanted. He's gonna play up like a two bob watch now. Whoa! Oh! Pull the hooks on him! Ah! Right, I'm pretty sure we'll be on here. Have a go at this. That's a 40 metre range. We've got some big fish through here. Heap of bait. If I can't get a kingy or something through here, I reckon uh, I'll pull the pin because they're not on the chew and I haven't got time to wait around for them. So I'll have a drift over this. This could be cool. I'd actually go home early and clean the boat, get everything done. <laughs> it's only early still. So, we've got a low tide. Uh, geez, it'd be already gone about nine o'clock. So, um, have a nice run in tide. The bar will be glassy as. If I bought my dive gear, I would have went and jumped in the water. That's the thing. You can 
smack your fish and get your bag limit pretty quickly. You have the whole day to do whatever. I wasn't really, I would have went out deep and 100% got kingies out there, but that rod doesn't hold enough line or, or just, just will get to the bottom, but there's no line left on it then. So I need to get a, a deeper jigging rod, but um, usually I'll just use one of my other little ones to jig out there or use liveys and you'll slay it in 140, but I wasn't really prepared for that. I just sort of come out to get a few snapper. That's how effective it is. I got the whole day on my hands still. Big log falling down the middle of the bar. Surely there's a jack hanging there. Look at that. Whoa. Dead set. This wind just went boom. Look at how choppy it is. this rip a little spot of cunning coming out of that northerly uh, into Peel. I'm gonna have a little feed here, have a drink, have a chill, might even jump in for a quick swim, then get head home, school pickup. What a bloody day, eh? Have a look at this, oh, I love this spot in a northerly. Have a look what she's done for lunch for me. A couple of snapper in there. Look at this. Homemade me goreng noodles. <laughs> Prawn, chicken, everything. Oh my God, I'm so hungry. That was a good day, very good day. That wind wasn't forecast to come up like this. It was meant to be nice all day. Literally zero to five knots all day till four o'clock Savo. Uh, come up at lunchtime. So I guess that's summer. It's unpredictable weather-wise. No. I'm going to stay here and enjoy this. Something's swimming through the shallows over there. Stingray. Look at the egg. I have no idea how she did the egg like this. How good is that? Clever person. <laughs> right, that dead set hardly even touched the sides. I was so hungry. I don't know whether to jump in the water or go home. I will tell you one thing, but I don't usually drink when I go out in the boat through the week. Um, I just drink water and you 100% feel better if you just drink water all day than if you have a few beers. I come home and I'm pretty tired when I've um, had a few beers, but if I just drink water, I come home, clean the boat, clean the fish, I'm ready to roll. All right, I had a stop work meeting and I'm not gonna go for a swim, I'm gonna go home. I'm gonna get the fish out of the esky, get them ready to fill it, go pick Axel up from school. Got a big arvo, guys. I hope you enjoyed that episode. That was awesome. I hope he's learnt something. Big thanks to Dino for teaching me a few things and allowing me to teach them to you guys. It's pretty nice of him. So apply them to your fishing, and I'm sure you will do it just as well as I did just then, which opens up the rest of your day to go and chase a whole another range of species, go deep, go in early, whatever, you know what I mean? All right, guys. Thanks for joining us again. See you in the next one.
I want to say a massive thank you to our legendary Patreons. You guys are bloody awesome. We appreciate the support more than you know. I'd like to welcome aboard our newest Patreons, James Hislop, Shane Bennett, Taylor Coburn and Timmy. Welcome aboard guys. We appreciate the support. If you'd like to become a Patreon, head over to patreon.com forward slash Adeline Adventures. See you next week guys.